In May 2023, a Danish company called Bioneer and a Korean company called Synergen joined forces to release a new hair growth product that promised to revolutionize hair loss forever by going right to the source of the problem, the genetics. The product uses tiny pieces of something called iRNA to stop hair loss in its tracks. This is a brilliant idea, a unique approach to hair loss. It was designed in Korea, one of the leading hair loss treatment centers on the planet, already has European approval and is on sale in Europe. It's even on sale on Amazon and the idea is truly unique. But still, I wouldn't go anywhere near this product and here is why. Hello, my name is Jibril. I'm a pharmacist who worked in the hair loss industry. First glance, this is an amazing breakthrough because it's such a novel idea. And the idea is this. Normally, your genetics, and to be more precise, your DNA decides what your hair loss is going to be like. Your DNA is a big, lumpy thing that is curled up deep inside your cell. RNA, on the other hand, is the little cousin of your DNA. It is smaller and more nimble, and one of its jobs is to carry out instructions from the DNA to the rest of the cell and to the rest of the body. So RNA is a little bit like your cell's postman. It takes instructions from DNA to the rest of the cell. So how is all this relevant to hair loss? Well, the idea that the developers of Cosm RNA had was to use something called interfering RNA to, well, interfere with how the messages are carried out from DNA to your hair follicles. Basically, it corrupts the postman. So the messages never reach the hair follicle. So this seemed like a genuine breakthrough. You block the genetics that are causing the hair loss and you grow back a thick forest of hair in no time. What could go wrong? Actually, quite a lot. Before we go into that, let me ask a really pressing question. Does this even work? It's been on the market for coming up to a year now. Does it even work? start by looking at the clinical trial itself and when you do you will very quickly realize something the results are very underwhelming at the initial dose the participants in the trial who had the treatment had on average an extra 2.2 hairs per square centimeter and when the dose was whacked up they had an extra 7.7 .7 hairs per square centimeter Technically, this is a positive result. Mathematically, it is a significant increase, but this is hardly jaw-dropping. And if you look at the before and after images from the trial, you'll find yourself looking and looking and looking some more. It's struggling to spot any hint of improvement. It's struggling to spot those extra 7.7 .7 hairs. Because the improvements are so tiny, they're not visible to the naked eye. And when you look at public feedback, because this treatment has been almost on the market for one year now, the results are still underwhelming. Surprisingly, this product is actually on sale on Amazon, and it is rated on Amazon as 3.6 stars out of 5. Six percent of people rating it as 5 stars, people are very happy, but a significant 25% giving it only 1 star, and 7% giving it only 2 stars. To be fair to the product, there are plenty of people who are seeing good improvement. And I noticed that reduced shedding is something a lot of people see and a lot of people mention. But looking at the pictures on Amazon, you can hardly say the results are dramatic. So we established the product does sort of work up to a point, but why is it $300, over $300 per bottle? Allow me to go on a tangent just to explain my next point. This book is produced every six months by the Department of Health here in the UK. And as a pharmacist, I use it almost every day. It gives the average prices for almost every drug with a license in the UK. So what the government do is they basically go and ask every manufacturer in the UK how much they charge for each drug and they come up with an average value. So you know that the value they list here is pretty much legit. Reading to the latest edition, a box of finasteride, Propecia, which is a popular hair loss uh, 
medication should cost around £1.77 sterling which is about $2.22 for a box that supplies one month. Well, for iRNA or Cosma RNA, it was claimed that this product is 83% as effective as finasteride. So my question is, why is Cosma RNA 150 times the price of finasteride? It's just as effective. So why is finasteride $2.22? and Cosmo RNA is 150 times more expensive. Surely, to justify that price, Cosmo RNA has to be 150 times better. But it's not. So far, I would argue that it is barely on par with Finastride. To be honest, we're not sure why they're charging $300, more than $300. I think the reason they're charging $300 or more is because they can. Now, let's go back to the first question. What is exactly wrong with these types of treatments? Why did I say I wouldn't touch these types of treatments with a 10-foot pole? This reason is the biggest, in my opinion, and it is to do with the balance between benefit and risk. And when I say risk, I mean risk from side effects. You see, once you start playing around with genes, with DNA, with RNA, you are entering a whole new field of game. This is beyond rubbing some minoxidil on your scalp or popping a quarter of a pill of a finasteride. This is this is a completely new game. The side effects become more frequent and when they occur they are more serious. And one serious side effect that has been generally reported with these types of treatments that use RNA is inflammation and immune response. So the immune tends to overreact sometimes to these types of treatments and that has been reported with similar with drugs that employ similar techniques. DNA and RNA are incredibly complex things. We don't really fully understand them. When you think that, okay, I'm going to block this hair loss pathway, you might actually be causing another problem. You might be blocking something else that you're not even aware of. This makes a lot of people nervous. The fact that we are messing around with things we don't fully understand. And I also learned that the specific RNA used with uh, this product Cosmo RNA blocks certain receptors in the hair follicles and usually when receptors are blocked the body is very smart it adapts by using something called receptor upregulation meaning that it just makes more receptors to get around the problem so you're blocking receptors and the body is making more receptors you kind of stuck in a vicious cycle and I still can't find how Cosmo RNA or the developers plan to overcome this potential problem. There are actually two drugs which use the same technology as Cosmo RNA on the market, but they are not for hair loss, they are for completely different things. I think one is for some heart problems and the other one is from, uh, for pain. Uh, one of those drugs called Ompatro, I was reading the other day uh, in the official literature that the side effect risk can affect more than one in 10 people more than one in 10 people. I think this is the highest level of side effect risk I have ever seen. This is more than 10%. And some of those side effects aren't particularly pleasant. So my argument is this, to justify these fairly high risk of side effects, the benefit has to be massive. For example, after one shot of the Cosmo RNA product, you wake up the next day with a thick jungle of hair overnight. Then some people might even choose to live with any of the minor side effects. Why? The benefit is so massive because they have a, a thick jungle of hair for the first time in 20 years. On the other hand, there are limits. There are people who will decide that no amount of hair growth justifies the risk that comes with playing around with DNA and RNA. Some people, me amongst them, I don't think any amount of hair growth justifies that. Another worrying thing I heard about this product is when they initially tried to launch in their home country in Korea, in, in South Korea, I understand the health authorities over there blocked it. They blocked the product from launching there. And the reason was they did not think that this was a cosmetic product. And the makers actually took the health authorities in Korea to court 
and it was a big messy old battle but I understand now they've finally been approved to release in Korea. So they even struggled to release the product in Korea. And here is another interesting point which makes me believe this product is a pure cash grab. The people behind the product can see that this product has not really been received that well. Uh, we saw the results, we saw the reviews. They're not stupid, they're very smart people. They can see the product is not really going anywhere. So why would they persist with this very high price and putting it on Amazon and all that? I think because it's a quick cash cow. I don't really think they see it as a long-term product that is going to be on the shelves for you know decades, 20, 30 years. I think they see it as let's get as much money as we can now because this product is going to die quickly. It has no prospect of being licensed in the US. It's my personal take, I would personally avoid anything to do with uh, DNA or RNA manipulation when it comes to hair growth. The reason is, uh, hair loss is a vanity problem. Nobody has ever been rushed into hospital suffering from hair loss. So you have to have a ceiling of how far you're willing to go to get your hair back. And the top of that ceiling is, is it gonna damage my health? I think we've lost that in the last few years. People are willing to do anything to get their hair back at the expense of their health. So you have to reflect on this and decide what is my limit, what is the maximum I'm willing to do to get my hair back. And I think playing around with DNA and RNA, uh, that's beyond the maximum.